with cancer, we require the answers to the following simple questions. Question number one is always, what is this? And that represents a biopsy, some tissue that is looked at under the microscope. And here you can see, this is actually the biopsy of the first lady I showed you, so here is some of her breast cancer tissue. So question one, what is it? It's always a tissue sample of some sort, examined under the microscope. It tells us what it is. The second question in sorting out the dimensions of the problem is to know where is it? And this, in doctor speak, is called the stage. You might recall seeing these images that showed spread of breast cancer to the liver, to the lung, to the pleural cavity where the fluid is sitting, and to bone. This represents advanced stage disease. So clearly here, if we were to treat this patient, which we did, you would need to use a treatment that works in many different parts of the body. Staging is complex, and again, it can be very bewildering. There's a new system, when I say new, about 10 years old, called TNM, where T describes the tumour, N describes the regional lymph glands, such as the armpit glands in the case of breast cancer, and M, the presence or absence of metastases. So you may hear your doctors talk about stage and they may talk about T numbers, N numbers and M numbers. It's a sort of shorthand which allows us to communicate accurately and fairly quickly the extent of the cancer. It's the answer to the question, where is it? So rational treatment requires knowledge of what is it? A biopsy. Where is it? That is always investigations like x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, all of those sorts of things. That then must be blended with knowledge. What works in this particular type of cancer at this particular stage? And there have been systematic studies done over the last century to work out what works best. And the little graph here shows you that if you were in this particular study, which was a study of Herceptin, you would have much rather have been on the yellow treatment, which was a drug called paclitaxel and Herceptin, than to have been on the red treatment because the lines are declining because treatment is failing. The red line was the chemotherapy alone arm. So that sort of information gets integrated into that prediction about which sorts of treatment are best to use. Now that system that I've put up there sounds all well and good, but it's not enough. There are very many important other factors about individualising treatment. Who is this patient? What is their age? Do they have other illnesses? Do they have personal preferences? And finally, there needs to be wisdom. And in the year 2007, it's not very common to find that one individual contains within them enough wisdom to make the decisions for a patient. And that's why often care is by a team, by a multidisciplinary team, and there can be conferences about what is the best way to proceed with treatment for patients. So understanding and treating cancer is a bit like this diagram here. Clinicians, we're simple folks. Uh, we would much prefer to have something like this with a single switch where when it comes to treatment it's easy, you turn the switch, everything's done. But the complexity of cancer means it's much more like the bottom part of the diagram. There are many things to tweak, there are many things to understand, there are many settings to adjust. And the other thing that's very important to understand is because we are constantly generating new knowledge we are actually on a bit of a, a moving carpet of knowledge, so the decisions we made this year will not be current decisions in two years' time, just as the decisions that I made for patients five years ago now would be modified by new data that we've learnt in the last five years from research. This very complicated diagram is actually now quite old. It was published in the year 2000 
and even then was a simplification of the wiring diagram of what controls cell growth. So if you wish to interfere with cell growth, either if you're a cancer cell and you want to have unrestrained growth, or if you're a cancer doctor and you want to stop unrestrained growth, there are many, many options in this wiring diagram where you may interfere. And I'm going to talk just about a little bit of research that concerns this tiny corner of this diagram here, just to give you an idea of the complexity. There's a picture from the light microscope. That is all that we had back in the 19th century. By the 1980s, we had immunohistochemistry, these brown stains that told us about the presence or absence of specific molecules in cancer that helped us in prediction. By the year 2000, we were able to look actually at the DNA. This is a test called FISH that gives us information about specific genes being present, being increased, being deleted. And now where we are, we're able to look at vast arrays of either genetic material or of protein within cancer cells. And we now have multi-gene predictors of how a particular cancer is going to behave and how it may respond to treatment. So this now is the cutting edge of research at this time.